Today, we're talking about speed lights. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Stafford here with the Beverage Photographer. You know, come to think of it, I'm thinking about changing that name from the Beverage Photographers to Royal Chalice Production. In the comment section below, let me know what you guys think. So as you know, we're talking about speed lights today. Uh, I'm testing out a new setup. I'm going to fill this out and see how I really feel about it. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I might go back to the previous one, but, you know, we'll see. Anyways, we're talking about speed lights, pros, cons, the price. Right here in front of me, I got two different speed lights. One of them is from Godox. This is the Godox version. And this is the newer version of Godox, the TT600. The newer version is the Speedlight Northwest 562. There are some things I like about it. There's some things I don't like about it. And, but we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. All right. So when it comes down to the newer Speedlight in particular, one thing that I do like about it without even like going through a standard pros and cons about speed light is I don't know it, it just looks better it's like more aesthetically pleasing than the newer if you if you, if you ch check the back out on the two versions that I have personally but one thing I do like about the Godox it does have the high speed sync on it whereas the newer speed light doesn't now there are some versions that do have the high speed sync and I do recommend getting the high speed sync version as it will come in handy in various situations. Now, uh, to go down some pros about a speed light is, for one, if you don't have no lights and you can't really afford a strobe, get a speed light. Why? Because lighting itself will change the game. Imagine if I turned off this lighting, the other backlighting, and even the main light that's hitting me and lighting me right now. Imagine having no light. Your image will look flat. Nobody wants a flat image, right? So get some lighting. I'll go over pricing at the end, but they're not expensive at all. Lighting will change the game. And then once you understand lighting, when you even take away the lighting, you'll be able to manipulate natural lighting and you'll still see amazing results. Now, the main reason why I, I still use uh, uh, you know st uh, speed lights because I do product photography. So, but we're gonna get down to some things. I got my list right here for pros and cons. All right, I ain't like no other YouTubers who just gonna act like they speaking to you that directly because most times they're using the teleprompter. Me, I ain't got money like that. So, old fashioned way, pros and cons list. All right. So, when it comes down to speed light, I don't, you could use it for, you know, your, your, your fills, rim lighting, things like that because they actually come in handy when doing those type of things. Main subject, I can show you some images. These images right here were actually shot using a speed light. It's, it was a lot easier to bring a speed light because they're a lot lighter than bringing in the actual strobe outside. Unless you have something like the 8200, which I'm pretty sure that was one of the reasons why they made it in the way that it is, is because it's light just like a speed light and you're able to, and it's able to be portable. That means you could take it anywhere that you want to take it. And it's also has the power of a, tr a traditional uh, a strobe. But again, the price, that's the downside about the 8200 is the price. But again, if you can't afford it, speed lights are the way to go, indeed. And another good thing about the speed lights, you can add modifiers to it. So they have a perfect modifier that you can actually add a strip box in. You just need to uh, buy it on the bracket, which is called the, the Godox Type S. Of course, they have other brands make their own version of it. But generally, it's just a bracket that you put the speed light right in and holds it. And then you're and it's and you're able to put like any type of bones mount on it. So that way, if you want to put uh, one of those uh, strip box light on it, you want to put the octagon box on it, etc., etc. You could go ahead and do that, and it works phenomenal. 
but one of the downsides to actually using that, which is actually one of the cons on the list, is the power. Unfortunately, because these are so small, the power output isn't amazing, but understanding lighting, as you saw with the results I showed you previously, phenomenal results. And you can also see the time of day that I'm, you also saw the time of day that I was shooting those um, images amazing results as you can see uh, I don't really do too much uh, portraits you could say like that anymore I mainly do product photography but every now and then I'll still go back and do some product photography uh, as you can see I'm doing YouTube now so you know I'm doing more video uh, not like these could actually help me out with video probably another one of the downsides about these is there's no uh, model lamps on them, so I can't really use them to actually see like, all right, if I have my product set in a certain location, uh, how is the light within this position actually affecting my subject? Is it giving it a nice thin light on the edge? Is it giving it a nice thick light? I won't be able to tell because it doesn't have a model lamp, unfortunately. But it does come in handy. One thing I do like about the speed lights that you can't do with the strobe, you can actually narrow the light. Uh, notice it has like a zoom function and this comes standard on every single one. Normally it tries to uh, match the lens distance that you have. So naturally when it's in TTL mode, <clears throat> which is through the lens mode, it uh, tries to match the type of lens that you have. So if you have a zoom lens, it automatically senses when you're at, if you have a 24 to 105, right? It automatically senses when you're at 24 millimeters. It automatically senses when you're at 50 millimeters. It automatically senses if you're at 105 millimeters. And so what it does when it's in TTL and it's on top of your hot shoe, it matches the distance away. So it knows, all right, I'm about 50 millimeters away. Let me let me stretch the light 50 millimeters away but it then narrows the light further now me personally I don't really shoot in TTL because again I'm doing product photography and even when I was shooting people which I use the flash I keep it in manual because I like to I like to you know be in control of every aspect of the lighting scenario as well as pretty much the whole entire photography situation I like to be in control of it it takes time for you guys to master that, like to be in control. But one thing that I do like about it is I'll set like the, again, certain situations, I'll set, I'll set the zoom level to the farthest level. On the Godax, it only goes down to 20, but on the newer, it goes down to 18 millimeters. So the further back it is, it's gonna give you like a wider shot. So sometimes I, I want that wider shot because I'm going to end up pointing the light at the background and I kind of want that nice, bright, uh, you know, background light to actually reflect off the background and almost bounce back into my image. Sad part about it, it's not circular, it's not round, so it's never really a perfect circle, but I, I still make it work, you know? You still have to make it work. Another thing I like about this light is whenever it's on, like, a, say, like a tripod or whatever you got it mounted onto it has a swivel head so it can actually turn around that actually saves you time from having to to pick up the light stand and readjust it around sometimes you have multiple light stand and their legs are crossed on each other be for various reasons like if only you guys could see how close I have the camera and its tripod and the main light source and its tripod. The legs are almost intertwined together and I wouldn't really be able to say, oh, I'm gonna move this because I have to pick that up and readjust my camera and everything will get too chaka chaka, as we say in the Caribbean, you know? So having a fluid head, if I have the light facing in this direction and, oh, I need it to turn, what do you know, it could turn. But the best part about the fluid head or the swivel head that I like about this is when it's on the hot shoe. Sometimes you don't want it to point at your subject. Why? Because you don't want the harsh, you don't want the harsh light on your subject. So sometimes, if you and, and then most times, you know, when you're shooting portraits, you have it in landscape mode, right? You have it in landscape mode. You're not gonna point it at your subject, such as this. You can't take it off the camera because the moment you take it off the camera, you have no more light source on your subject, right? On the camera, 
you can turn it up. Now you have a light source that's with a giant diffusion because you're bouncing it off the ceiling. You're bouncing it off the walls. Bounce off the wall, hit your subject, it's still lighting them. What do you know? It's still in the same spot. Once you go back in horizontal mode, right? I mean, yeah, horizontal mode or landscape, what do you know? You can either have it bouncing up against the wall. Turn it around, bounce it against that wall. Oh, you need it up in the air? Bouncing against the wall. Amazing. That's one thing that you, that you can do with a speed light that you can't do with a strobe. But again, if you could afford a strobe, get a strobe. Why? More power, more power, longer uh, lasting uh, battery life. And I'll, I'll touch on the battery. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll touch on the battery now. So they use four batteries, four AA batteries. I recommend getting rechargeable batteries. And I'll do a review on the rechargeable batteries that I personally use. They actually come pretty handy and they're, and they're inexpensive. So get rechargeable batteries. I mean, they don't last as long as if you had a straw because again, smaller batteries, it's double A. Versus if you have a giant straw, you could get a giant straw that plugs in you can get one that actually runs off a chargeable battery, but either option, strobe is still better. But they have their place, and they definitely come in handy. In, in the studio for my work, I actually do both. Dogs sitting on me. This is Bella. You okay, Bella? You okay, Bella? Bella, I hope you ain't peeing on the because you won't fight if you do. Alright, all right, some cons about this, or some more cons about this. <coughs> you guys can see Bella? It's Bella. <laughs> some more cons about this is, uh, I already talked about the beam light, and it's true. Uh, the longer you use this, the easier, like, it's not even the longer that you use it, it's, it's when the battery starts to die. Whenever the battery starts to die, you'll notice that the that the power or the output of it starts to diminish. And you, you'll also notice that the, uh, the trigger, if you're using it with a trigger, stops working every now and then too. It will fire like, ah, Bella, calm down. It'll fire like every other shot. Boom, boom, clap, yo, use it. Yo, calm down, calm down, calm down. The power will start to reduce and you'll notice that even when you're using like a trigger with it, if you have it on an external uh, uh, light stand, the trigger itself would not even fire. Like it'll fire like every other time. Some people even said that uh, it starts to that it, that these lights start to overheat. I never actually seen no problems about with these lights overheating. I know that when I was shooting, uh, there was one scenario when I was on a party bus. And obviously, I can't bring no giant strobes on a party bus, limited amount of space. I had to bring a speed light. I brought two speed light. I brought all my uh, rechargeable batteries, and I switched them out. I had to shoot one to one, power level one to one, because it was mad dark in the bus. You only have the uh, neon lights. I had to push the capability of my camera with low light. But at the same time, it, it, I wasn't not going to bring a light. Uh, for the simple fact that uh, I understand lighting and I understand that using light will actually separate uh, separate your images from amateurs to pros and so it only it was only right that you you know bring some type of light source honestly even if you're only I, I've been in situations where I just had to use my cell phone light and like you know I, I turned on the flash on my phone and just you know was taking pictures like that because again you understand lighting you're able to manipulate it in certain situations and you know it comes in handy some light is better than no light. But as for the overheating, i never seen it overheat. But I have noticed that the batteries do get hot once you're using it for a long period of time. In no way, shape, or form should that mess with uh, the lifespan of your speed light for the simple fact that in the battery compartment, it's, it's meant to uh, handle and dis uh, dissipate that heat. As you can see, it actually has heat sinks right here. Guys, let me know your thoughts on this video, what you think about speed lights, and also let me know what speed lights do you have 
in, in, in the descriptions below. But, you know, another thing, the final thing that we're going to talk about in this video before we wrap is the cost. This light right here is a Godax TT600 it actually cost, what, $65? Probably around the same price. I think it was a little bit more, believe it or not, which is which is kind of funny because this is a bigger branded name than newer Godox, but yet this newer light was just a little bit more expensive. I think it was around like 72, give or take, you know. But speed lights, I've seen the price range from around $65 all the way up to a thousand dollars, like. Like, um, the EL1, that speed light cost over $1,000. A speed light. Do you, I recommend it? I don't know. I, I would have to get it in hand. I would need to test that light out. I would have to see why that speed light cost $1,000. Why should I get a speed light that costs $1,000 when I can actually buy a strobe, a battery power strobe, for cheaper? I'd rather get the 8200 Pro that only costs around $365 before I buy a speed light. But again, I would need to get it in hand to actually see for myself the pros and cons about that speed light. Because when I saw the price of $1,000, a stack, one stack, I'm like, what? Ain't no way. That sh Yo, it better be, mm, I want to say some things, but you know, we on YouTube. Mm. Anyway, guys, I hope you like this video. Please hit that like button, subscribe button, and guys, I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Bella! Oh, follow me on Instagram.